folks. My first guest tonight is a veteran journalist who has served as chief White House correspondent for CBS and co-hosted CBS This Morning. She now takes the helm as anchor of the CBS Evening News. Please welcome Nora O'Donnell. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you again. Congratulations on your first week Thank anchoring you. the CBS Evening News. That's pretty heady stuff. But be honest, after seven years on the morning show, did you take this job just so you could sleep in? <laughs> that was part of the calculation, yes, to be able to have breakfast with my children. It has to be, I know, I'm joking, but it can't be insignificant that you get back on a human schedule. Well, you know, good friends with everybody at CBS this morning, but it is, it is a bit of a grind getting up so early in the yeah. morning. So now I get up at 5 a.m., which is considered oh, sleeping in. Oh, <laughs> lazy, lazy bones. <laughs> <laughs> now, how has the first week been? First of all, did you get a good band? Because it's hard to find when you're hosting a show. You got to have the right you band. You guys, are you available? Uh, right here. <laughs> yeah. What's the What's the biggest difference for you so far? You know, it's a sh it's 30 minutes, and so it's jam packed with news. And this is a legacy broadcast. Well, from two hours to 30 minutes. Yeah, wow. to 30 minutes. So yeah. it's kind of appointment television at 6:30. So if you if you don't have a lot of time, tune in at 6:30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> also on your mobile device, but um. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. You guys are on oh, the mobile device yes, now. Okay, that's it. that's good. But I think you know, for me as um, a journalist for 20 years, it's a legacy broadcast, mm -hmm. and so Who I really was the first woman that you saw anchoring because you're only the third uh, uh, a solo anchor of an evening news broadcast to be a woman. Who was the first uh, female journalist that you saw and admired? You know, I grew up in a, in a military family, so I lived all over the world. The news meant a lot. And so I was talking to family members and friends, and it really was Barbara Walters. You know, I can remember. Mm, yeah. And um, one of my friends from San Antonio is actually here tonight in the audience. Yay! <laughs> and, and they reminded me that I used to actually call them up and leave on the voice machine. I'd just say, hi, it's Barbara Walters. I'm calling you for an interview. <laughs> so even as a young girl, I think I was imitating Barbara Walters. I wanted to be like Barbara Walters because she was the most powerful woman I saw on television. And of course, I revered the news. My mother had a book of hers when I was a kid that I remember called How to, How to Ask Practically Anyone Practically Anything. And I want to ask you, it's, it was a great book. I actually read some of it when I was younger. How do you get yourself to ask the person who doesn't want to answer that question, the, the question they don't want to hear? How, what do you do before you ask that question that's going to get their back up? I treat them with respect. I really do. I think at the heart of, um, I think at the heart of great conversation and great relationships is trust and integrity. So I do tons and tons of research. I think 90% of getting the right answer is asking the right question. But if I treat someone with respect and then ask them a tough question, which you know I like to do, mm -hmm. but do it respectfully, I can usually get a good answer. Well, this is the, <laughs> this, this, this news seat that you're in right now is the most storied one on television. This is the house that Murrow and Cronkite built. Yes. What does that job mean to you? Uh, it means an incredible amount, you know, and uh, I've been reading Walter Cronkite's uh, biography. He held the post for more than 20 years, was known as the most trusted man in America, the most trusted voice. And one of the things he said was, journalism is what we need to make democracy work. And... <laughs> I so firmly believe that in my bones about having an informed electorate and also having a trusted news source. You know, I think there's lots of sources out there of affirmation, but we provide information on the CBS Evening News. What will, what, what will success look like to you? Um, I, success means, um, you know, winning reputationally. And it means, it means that people come to our broadcast every night and say, you know what, they play it straight. They call a ball a ball, a strike a strike, I trust them, they do the most important news, 
And they do not only point out abuse and corruption, but they also point out what's happening right in America. People that are doing great service to their nation and their communities, and we're also gonna tell those kinds of stories. So I wanna have a, a broadcast that um, is about integrity, you know, because I do believe that's important to having an informed electorate that can go to the polls and make the right choices. Well, the, you got some praise. You, you, speaking of calling, you know, a ball a ball and a strike a strike, you, you got some praise on Monday for being the only one of the, the major news broadcasters to uh, describe Donald Trump's tweets about the squad as racist. Mm -hmm. What was the editorial process to, what was the decision? How was that reached? Because no one else did that. Well, beyond looking at it and going, yeah, that seems racist, what, what was the decision? Right. And um, we looked at the history of those words and the context of those you mean, words. mean, uh, go back to where you came from? Yes, to go back. And I think if you are a person of color, if you are a minority, that's a phrase that you've probably heard in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it's a hurtful phrase, a very hurtful phrase. And it's a historically racist trope. And so we called them racist tweets. We did not call the president a racist. We didn't label him. We called the context of those remarks what they are. Right. He might have found those remarks any place and just accidentally tweeted them. <laughs> well, we... we Who knows where they came from? We, we were... <laughs> and we're reporting that after the president used a rally in North Carolina to repeat those phrases and then that the crowd shouted it back, that he received his wife, Melania, told him to stop, Ivanka told him to stop. There were a number of congressional Republicans who went to the vice president and said this should not become a rallying cry at political rallies, mm -hmm. that that's gone too far. Might be too late, though, because the crowd seemed to enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? You've, you've created a, or he has created an atmosphere that may, he may not be able to control. Right, but that's why I think journalism and information is so incredibly important, what we do. It, it exposes us to the mistakes that people made. It has, it causes other people to hold them accountable. All of that information is incredibly key. When you sign off the show, mm -hmm. um, so far your sign off has been, and that is the CBS Evening News. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course Cronkite had his famous, and that's the way it is. And that's the way it is. And people search for the way they say goodbye. And I, I understand we, ha we have some of the choices that didn't make the cut for your sign off here. <laughs> And I was, I, was, I was hoping that you could uh, take us through some of the things that you decided not to say at the end of your broadcast. Oh, how did you get a hold of these? Um, we made them up, but... Um, <laughs> these, I cut these, but those were those right there, right there. Says, would you mind uh, giving those a shot right there? Just imagine you're saying goodnight. Uh, you're there, you're camera three, you're, you're a fine broadcaster. Okay, right there. okay. Right. This the, is the from first, Stephen first, Colbert. These, yeah. these are the rejected uh -huh. sign-offs mm -hmm. that Nora right. O'Donnell did not want to say. I'm Nora O'Donnell, and you can't make this stuff up, folks. Okay, it would have been good. It would be good. Best one? Good night, and good luck with all that. <laughs> I'm Nora O'Donnell, and that Nora O does it. <laughs> that was pretty good. Pretty good. That's okay. good. That's good. Yeah. And that is the CBS Evening News Wow, I need a drink. <laughs> the CBS Evening News airs nightly. Nora O'Donnell, everybody. We'll be right back with Topher Grace.